segment four, and the HMS Victory is planked. I've got a coat of tongue oil on it, and I'll let this sit overnight. That's why I have the glove on, it's still damp. So, not my best job of planking, but I'm learning, and I'm hoping that you're learning as you watch my videos. I'm going to change this. This is really not an entry level ship. This is a mid level ship, and that's because the planking on this was very difficult. It has an unusual shape to it. So, let's get into how I got to this part of the ship. I'm very pleased with the possibility of the planking going very well. Because of the nature of this ship, I don't need to taper anything on this end. Obviously, I used a plank bender to get this curve. That wasn't a problem. I was very concerned. Let me take these off because this should be dry. I was very concerned on this back section of the ship because of the turn that this has to make. It's very strong, and I didn't know that I'd be able to do it. Here is the results of my first attempt and I'm very pleased with that. I have a slight gap there. I can live with it. So let me show you how I made this bend. What I do is I position the plank where it's going to go on the front. I've already bent it. I let it dry. Then I hold it firmly, come all the way down to where the bend is, and then I take a pencil and I mark now this one's going to be different so I'm gonna to have to mark this bend way up here and it's gonna to curve to here now this one may be I know you can't see on the camera the pencil mark but I can and now looking at those marks and on the where you can see the hottest part of the iron and this is going to have to have a little bit of a twist too so this uh, this may be quite the challenge then I'd slowly bend this around You can see the wood changing color. Actually, this one I may pull out of the holder. And I'm trying to put a little S curve to it. And that's the kind of bend I can get without stressing that wood. There's no crack or anything. As many of you know, I am new to model ship building. And planking, there is an art to it, and I think it just takes a lot of experience. I've gotten down how to bend it very well, but some of the areas I'm struggling with, like coming this part, I decided to uh, go this direction. I have a huge gap here. So I thought and thought and thought on how I can deal with it. So this is what I'm going to try. We'll see how it turns out. I'll show you the other side and what I've done is I've cut pieces and slid them inside that gap and then when I get it all done and I sand that we'll see how it turns out and looks so I kind of have a layered look in that that gap that I created and since you can see in here the black one of the models that I just completed I had done better on the, the planking, but there were a few little gaps. You can see one right here. See that black right there? What I've been using is black caulk. And I use it as a sealer or as uh, in ancient times they would use pine tar to seal their ships. Well, I've been doing the same thing with black caulk, and I've had a very good results with it. You can see there's some right there. Once it dries, as long as you didn't smear it into the wood, you normally can just, there it goes. See how I'm just peeling that right off? And it gives me a nice fine line, which I don't mind. And there's some residue on there I'll be able to scrape off. I'm trying to hold the camera and do this all at the same time. So I've been very happy. You can see there's some 
has smeared out here, but I will be able to scrape that right off and then sand that down. So we'll see in the end how it turns out, how it looks. I am happy with the using the natural stain on this. It gives the lighter color, which is similar to the actual ship. And um, it'll darken a little bit when I put the tongue oil on it. But that will also strengthen the wood. Here's a brief example how I use the, the black caulking. And this is just 100% silicone caulk. So I usually just squirt out a small amount which, on a palette of some sort. And in this case, I'm just using a scrap um, plank. So basically, I just put a little dab on there, and then work it in. I start one under the other, and I just kind of smooth it in there, rock it back and forth. And when I get a small opening like this, it's harder to get in, so I have to take a smaller amount. Or sometimes I'll just skip that section. One added benefit, it adds some weight to the ship, which makes it more sturdy, and it strengthens where these timbers go together, especially here in the front where I've got some pretty weak gluing. For the gaps that were in this area, I, you can see I've put little pieces in, I've glued them in place, and then I'm hoping I can sand all that extra off and come up with a smooth surface. When you get to the point when you're planking and there's a curve, what happens, and I'll try and, exp uh, try and illustrate it with this larger piece of wood, as that curves, this bottom inside edge actually will be further out than this, and that's what gives you a gap because this is preventing this from being flat up against there. So I purchased a tool. Uh, there's another video I have that highlights it and how to put it together. This is a, a chamfering tool and it will cut an angle on that plank on this um, bottom edge so it can fit in there so that this edge is even with this edge. Now I cut this plank down to about the length that I will need. It's just easier if you do that. And then you have to realize which edge you're, you're trimming because that will be the top inside edge of the plank when you put it on the ship. It's easier to do before I wet the wood and bend it, so I'm doing this when it's straight. I've also learned that you have to be careful. You don't want to get a splinter because these splinters are really tiny, especially in this uh, walnut. So what you want to do is draw this through while pushing it down slightly. You don't, you don't have to use a lot of force. And obviously I can't get here on the end, so what I'll do is I'll pull it back through the other direction. Now I'll do that again later. But, so here I'll pull this through. I'll put this on top to give it a little pressure. And... I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of wood that comes off. Let me try and do it without the paper towel so you can see better. Hopefully you realize I'm risking life and limb here. And I just do this a few times until I get a little angle or a little bevel on that piece of wood that I'm comfortable with. You can also adjust this so you get more or less of a bevel. Of course, I would do one without the camera on, but there you can see how it's shaved off just a small amount of wood and is giving me that angle. And if you have this set up just right, it, it'll um, it'll block so it'll only take off what you want. It'll because it hits the bottom of this wood frame and not the blade. So really I'm down, I'm just, just pulling a few, a few extra times. Here's the beveled edge. So I want that to be 
on the bottom where it doesn't show and then this will slide right up against there and you can see I've got a nice tight I don't know if you can actually see but I've got a nice tight seam so here's a, a look at that little tool and there's the two adjustment screws so you can adjust the angle pretty simple it was harder to put this tool together than it was to use it that's for sure so but like I said if you search my videos I have a video on how to put this little tool together because it comes in several pieces overall the planking is going fairly well I have a problem at the front over here and it it's where I layered those and I kind of pre-sanded a little bit and I have a little dip in there that I'm going to try and insert another piece of wood and one tool that has come in very handy is this miniature sander I'll make a, a video on it too how well it operates and things but just a, a side note I'm able to feather something and I think lay it in here and have it feather away so let me give that a shot so what I'm going to do is feather this out very thin on both ends leave it thick in the middle and try and insert it right into here and see how it looks I can feather that and get it paper thin Now I'm going to need to bend it, and I'm going to try and insert it right there into that bend and glue that in place. And I think that will look much better than the dip that was there. This will be my second to the last piece on this side. And you can see where I've sanded down the two ends so that it should fit right in here my last, last test fit and I think I'll be able to slide that forward and get it in place. I want to have a little bit of time to maneuver it and push it in place. I'm going to switch to use just this uh, clear gel glue. I also make a mark on the back, an F for front, B for back, so I don't forget which side goes where because when you get to where you have to keep filing it you lose track so here we go we'll see how this worked out should have used super glue on this end which maybe I can squirt some in there and then I use whatever I can find to hold that in place which is going to take two pieces find another piece of scrap here Let's find something that's wedge shaped here in my scraps there we go So here's the piece I just inserted. That fit in there pretty good. Now I'll just need to make another small piece that goes in there. And that will complete the planking on this side. Remember where I stacked these up on the back side and then what I did is I sanded them and then I just glued planking right over the top of them. Does this look perfect? No but I'm not going for perfection. The other side looks similar, not exactly the same. I need to do a little more sanding right up there to blend that in better. I am happy with the planking midway. And this is the first time I've ever done a ship that is shaped like that on the front. So I'm not real totally happy with the work I did there. But this is a learning process. It's a fun hobby for me, so I'm going to put some tongue oil on the hull. I'm going to put a natural finish on it, and this is uh, 
Minwex tongue oil. It'll absorb into the wood and strengthen it and it'll bring out its natural color. Just put it on real thick, let it sit for about 10 minutes or so, and then wipe the excess off.